and how are you? Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Everybody. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Who Jesus is. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Who Jesus is. That's right, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. And we've got to do what? We've got to tell everybody we know. My name is Miss Karen Fletcher. How do you do? My name is Miss Karen Fletcher. How do you do? We are so glad. So very glad to see you. How do you do? What's your name? How do you do? And what's your name? How do you do? We are so glad. So very glad to see you. How do you do? Again, I hope you're having a great day. Yes, we want to have a good day today. All right, well, we've got a great lesson. Our lesson is still, we're still talking about being kind to the poor because there is a blessing when you're kind to the, when you're kind to the poor. When you give to the poor, when you help to the poor, God says you're lending to him and he's going to repay. All right, so our lesson today comes from Acts, the ninth chapter. We're going to start at the 36th verse, but before we start, we're going to start with Prayer. And what is prayer? Prayer is a conversation between you, me, and God. It is a, a dialogue. We're talking to God and he's listening and then he's talking to us and we're listening and the key to listening to God is obeying. We should immediately obey. All right, so today we are, we're about to start with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, wonderful God. You are just such a good, good God, a good, good Father. That's who you are. You love us immensely. You love us real big. And we thank you for the bigness of your love towards us. I thank you, God, and I pray that as we hear this lesson and... Uh, hear what is being brought this time that we will think about those things and let those seeds be planted in our hearts and we will water them as we act out kindness and love to others in the mighty name of jesus thank you lord amen all right so again our lesson starts in acts the um, ninth chapter verses 36 through 43 and it says there was a believer in Joppa named Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was always doing kind things for others and helping the poor. About this time, she became ill and died. Kind Dorcas, kind Tabitha died. Her body was washed for burial and laid in an upstairs bedroom. But believers had heard that Peter was nearby in Lydda, or Lydda. So they went, so they sent two men to beg him, please come as soon as possible. So Peter returned with them. And as soon as he arrived, they took him to the upstairs room. The room was filled with widows who were weeping and showing him the coats and other clothes that Dorcas had made for them. But Peter asked them all to leave the room. Then he knelt and prayed. Turning to the body, he said, Get up, Tabitha. And she opened her eyes. When she saw Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. 
Then he called in the widows and all the believers, and he presented her to them alive. The news spread through the whole town, and many believed in the Lord. And Peter stayed a long time. Okay, so I was saying, um, be kind to the poor. Be kind to the poor. And Tabitha, or Dorcas, either name, she was known for being kind to people. She made nice clothes and nice things. I'm sure she made more than clothing. But she made nice things and she gave them away. And she was probably sold some too. But there was things that she had made and, and, and they were still in her present where you know where the people were and they showed Peter when he got there these are things that she made she was kind to people she gave to the poor I'm telling you we've got to learn how to give to people we have to learn how to give to the poor sometimes maybe you have a little attitude and you don't want to give to the poor let me tell you this when you give to God when you give to the poor and again, the Bible says when you give to the poor, you're lo loaning to God. God will bless you back. He will bless you back with money and with more than money can buy. When you give to God, when you give to the poor and he's going to pay you back, he'll pay you back in money and more than money can buy. And why do I say that? Could money buy Tabitha's life back from death? No, but she was rewarded in more than money can buy. She lived again. As Peter prayed, she lived again. As Peter told her to get up, she got up. It, it just pays to serve Jesus. It just pays to honor God. He tells us to give to the poor. We need to learn to give to the poor. Remember last week, um, what was his name? He gave, he gave monies to um, the the poor, and God saw his 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 alms, the money he gave to the poor, and then they were, I believe, they were Greeks. They were saved because he gave money to the poor, and he he honored God. So we've got to learn to honor God, honor God with your obedience, honor God, and help the poor. All right. Okay. So our memory verse is found in Proverbs 19 and 17. Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord and he will reward them for what they have done. Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord and he will repay them for what they have done. Oh, goodness what am I about to erase something I need nope don't do that okay Proverbs 19 and 17 Proverbs 19 and 17 whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord and he will repay them for what they have done amen you can you can't out be God in giving. You cannot out be God in giving. When I was a, a, a young girl, there was a song they sang and it says, you can't be God's giving no matter how you try. We cannot be God's giving. He can be us giving. Yes, he can. I mean, just giving us life. Okay, so we want the Lord to bless us, right? We want the Lord to bless us so we can bless somebody else. And you know that Kirk Franklin song that we have been singing for a little while. Let's just sing it some more. All right? So it goes like this. <clears throat> bless me, bless me, bless me God indeed. The devil, death has been defeated. He is our victory. Bless me, bless me, Lord, not just for me, but so everyone around me can have everything they need. Let all these folks that's with me, God, have everything they need. Bless me, bless me, bless me, God, indeed. Death has been defeated. He is our victory. Bless 
bless me, bless me, God, not just for me, but so everyone around me can have everything they need. Let all these folks that's with me, God, have everything they need. Yes, we need God to bless us so we can have everything we need. Amen? Yes, okay. And where do we go from here? We go to our black history. Blacks in history. God has a wonderful plan for your life. And whatever your ethnicity is, whatever uh, be you uh, a woman or a man, a girl or a boy, God has something wonderful planned for your life. Now listen to this. John Lewis was born February 21st, 1940 in rural Alabama. His parents were sharecroppers who worked on a farm picking cotton for landowners. As a young boy, Lewis also picked cotton and did other farm duties with his family. It was hard work, but he enjoyed being with the chickens. Lewis wanted to be a pastor, so he would preach to his feathered flock in the chicken coop while he was tending the hens and counting their eggs. His inspiration was King, whose words Lewis listened to on the radio. Lewis studied at the American Baptist Theological Seminary in Nashville and helped organize lunch sit-ins against segregated restaurants where blacks and white people could not eat together. Sometimes he'd be arrested for his actions, but Lewis accepted being thrown in jail for fighting for what is right. He called that good trouble. For instance, he was one of 13 original freedom fighters who traveled by bus to test laws that were supposed to protect black people, but he was beaten and jailed several times on his journey. Lewis' most memorable act of good trouble occurred on March 7, 1965, when he led a group of 600 people across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama on what would be known as Bloody Sunday. Lewis, who was then 25 years old, marched across the bridge and fight for equal voting rights for black people. In his, in his bag, he carried just a toothbrush, toothpaste, two books, an orange and an apple but he and other peaceful protesters were met by police carrying batons. They had nothing to fight with. That was nothing to fight with. Police fired tear gas onto the crowds and attacked them, leaving many bloody and wounded. Lewis was knocked unconscious. The events of Bloody Sunday were caught on camera and televised to the country. They attracted more protests. King joined Lewis and thousands of other protesters to march from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama. Their effort eventually led to the signing of the Voting Rights Act in 1965, which outlawed discriminatory practices that prevented many black Americans from voting. It seems like people forgot history. But anyway, let me continue. Lewis eventually became a congressman from Georgia in 1987, serving until his death from pancreatic cancer at the age of 80 on July 17, 2020. During his time in Congress, he continued his work for civil rights and encouraged young people to do the hard work necessary to change the country by getting into good trouble. Get into good trouble trouble that moves you forward and so uh, John Lewis had a place God had God had a plan for his life and he lived it out God has a plan for your life remember that a plan for your life and we need to follow the plan that God has for your life now if you don't know the plan how do you find out the plan by communication. What does that mean? By praying to God and asking God, what do you want me to, to do in life? And maybe maybe you're in, in second grade, third grade, fourth grade, ninth grade, whatever. Just ask God, okay, Lord, help me to do what I need to do today so I can be where you want me to be. Ask God daily. God, show me what you want me to do today so I can be walking in your will. And he will do just 
that. We've got to learn to trust God in our journey, don't we? We've got to learn to trust God in our journey. And for and he has a plan for everybody, but so many, so many times people are walking outside of the plan because they don't even know God. And so that's why I tell you it's up to us to tell people about God. We need to tell people about God and how he loved us so much that while we were sinners, he sent his beloved son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. And because Jesus did that, and he died, and he rose, and he did all of that, so we could be, so we could have communication with God. Because there was a time when we could not talk with God. Adam and Eve had broke that, and we could not talk with God. But when Jesus came and and shed his blood, the blood washed our sins away, and now we can communicate with God. So when we pray. We are praying to God. Isn't that a good thing? That is a great thing. He loved us so much that he did all of that. So we've got to make sure that we are spreading that good news. That is good news. Okay, and so when you're, when you're in the kingdom of God, when you're part of the body of Christ, he just works so many things for your good and for the good of others. Just think about Peter went to... Uh, Dorcas's house she was lying in an upper room and he went up there and he prayed and who would have ever thought that he could pray and the dead would come alive God has given us if we believe if we walk according to his will we can have the same powers that Jesus had but we've got to walk according to God's will we can't be walking one day oh one day I'm a believer and the next day uh, -uh I'm gonna just be me Mm -mm, we got to do God every day. And if you do God every day, you're in for the ride of your life. God will help you to do things in school that you never thought you could do. Maybe you think you can't do it. And you, you just pray, Lord, I have studied. I need your help. And he will help you. So that's, um, that's uh, for the ride of your life as a believer. And then if you're not a believer... You can become a believer. Just believe that Jesus is God's son, that he died for your sins, that he rose again, and that you want him to lead your life. You don't want to lead your life, but you want to listen to his voice and you want to go where he sends you. And so let's just start with the first verse. Here it goes. You don't have to stand in line. Go right up to the front this time. If you want to go right through, all you have to do is A. Admit to God that you're a sinner and repent. B. Believe that Jesus is God's own son. C. Confess your faith in Jesus Christ, the Savior and Lord. It's the ride of your life. The ride of your life. When you dare to believe in Jesus Christ, it's the ride of your life, the ride of your life. When you dare to believe in Jesus Christ, it's the ride, it's the ride of your life. One more time. Here we go and you don't have to stand in line. Go right up to the front this time. If you want to go on through, all you have to do is A. Admit to God that you're a sinner and repent. B. Believe that Jesus is God's own son. C. Confess your faith in Jesus Christ, the Savior and Lord. For the ride of your life, the ride of your life, when you dare to believe in Jesus Christ, it's the ride of your life, the ride of your life, when you dare to believe in Jesus Christ, it's the ride, it's the ride of your life. 
It's the right, it's the right, it's the right, it's the right of your life. Hallelujah. When you walk with Jesus, he will take you places that you did not even think you could do, could go. You will be doing that you didn't even think you could do when you walk in the will of God. It's, the Bible says that, that God will give you, and, and, and a lot of people quote exceedingly and abundantly, and both of those are big. He will give you exceedingly big, abundantly big, above all that you could ever ask or think. But I like the King James Version, because I'm really a King James Version girl. I just read NLT for you all. But it says exceeding abundantly. King James doesn't say exceedingly, comma, abundantly. No, it says exceeding abundantly, bigger than abundantly. God will do bigger than abundantly, above all that you could ever ask or think, according to the power that works in you. So you, that's why you have to have the Holy Spirit living on the inside, and you can do those things that you never could imagine. That which you imagine you can do, you can do that and so much more. Well, all right. It's really been my pleasure being with you today. We're going to pray this out. And all right. Dear Heavenly Father, again, you are such a good God, such a wonderful God. You are a giving God. Lord, you gave to the poor. We were not, if we, if we had money to buy salvation, we wouldn't have enough. But you gave to us your only begotten son to, to rectify us, to put us back into fellowship with you again. Because we were separated because of sin. But because of the sinless death of Jesus for us, we have been, we have been put back in fellowship with you again. And we can talk with you again. And what a privilege it is. You are a wonderful God. The good, good Father, that's who you are, and we thank you. And Lord God, we are going to tell everybody we can about Jesus. We are going to spread the good news everywhere we go. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And so it is. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. And we've got to do what? We've got to tell everybody we know. Have a wonderful rest of your day.